Hey, hi, hello there. It's Ashley and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Bursts of Sunshine. Today we're going to be doing some super fun Halloween DIYs. I know I'm a little late getting these done, but I'm still excited to show them to you. So let's just get into it. So I'm going to start with these wood planks. I got this pack at the Dollar Tree and it comes with, I think, like four or five in them. I'm only going to use one for this project and I'm going to paint it black. As you can see, my paint was about empty, so I had to pretty much like beat the paint out of it. But once I got it, it was enough to cover it. I don't like to waste any paint and I was going to get every single drop. I painted this black and I painted the edges too, just because it is going to sit up. Once that was completely dry, I'm going to take some orange paint and I'm going to take a chip brush and I'm just going to kind of roughly paint orange streaks all over this. I'm really going for a distressed look, kind of like just a little bit of orange peeking through. I think this is going to make this pop a little bit. You could totally leave it plain black if you prefer, but I just wanted a little something extra. Next, I'm going to put some words on it. I used my Cricut to cut these out, but you can also use a um, paint pen and just handwrite it on there. I thought this was a cute little saying. Things are a little batty around here, and I just put some little bats that I had just found on Google. I just cut this out on my Cricut with some white vinyl, and then I just stuck it on. But again, you can hand paint this, or you could even use stickers. Now that it is done, I want it to stand up to be a cute little display sign. So I'm just going to take a Jenga block and I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on it. And I'm just going to stick it down on the bottom of the back of this sign. And it's kind of going to work as a stand to hold this up. For the next project, we're going to need a coffee mug. You can use any mug of your choice. This is just the one I'm going to use, and I'm going to use it for a mug topper. And I'm going to lay this on top of some foam board so that way I can trace out a circle and cut it out so it will perfectly fit on top of my mug. Um, I would suggest using sheets of foam, like the flexible foam you can get at Walmart over the foam board. It will be more sturdy and like a little more slip resistant on your mug, but this is just what I had on hand. So now I'm going to take some lightweight spackle some icing bags and I'm also going to use a size 1M tip from Walmart and this is my basic go-to things I use for my whipped cream toppers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my spackle and I'm going to put it on just a little tray so that way I can color it first. I'm going to add a little bit of harvest orange paint. This is just cheap paint from Walmart and I'm just going to mix it up so that way it's a orange topper. Now I did have to use a lot of paint. I'm not going to bore you through making you watch me mix this forever because it was peach for the longest time. I had to add so much paint to get this to be orange. So make sure you have plenty of paint for whatever color you're trying to make it. Once I got it to the desired orange color of my dreams, I just used a throwaway spoon to put it into the piping bag. So now I'm going to use a little bit of tape to secure my foam board onto my mug and that's just going to hold it up for me while I pipe and I'm just going to start piping my whipped cream topper. This doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to just look like whipped cream piped onto a cup. So again, it's not gonna be perfect. I have these little foam bones that I got at the Dollar Tree. They're kind of a little bit glittery, but they're super cute. And I thought these would be perfect just to add a little something to this orange. And I broke a couple of the bones in half so that I can have them sticking up out of the whipped topper. And I just thought this was super cute. And it just gave it a little something extra. I'm gonna let this sit and dry for at least 24 hours to completely harden. Now that it is dry, you can see I have a little bit of white board hanging over the edge. I'm just going to take some scissors really quickly and I'm just going to trim that off. I'm not going to trim too close that I accidentally cut off my spackle. You got to be careful not to trim too much, but it's okay because I'm still going to touch it up with a little bit of paint so that way it matches. So just using a paintbrush and the same orange paint, I'm just going around all of the edges and covering up all the white parts. So from any angle you look at it, it doesn't look like it's sitting on a piece of foam board. It just looks like it blends in with the whip topper. Once that is completely dry, it is done and it is ready to sit on your mug. Again, you can make this any size you want for whatever size or shape mug you have. I really liked this cute little ghost mug, so I made it to fit that. Isn't that the cutest little thing? So you just set it on top and display it. Just make sure that it's away from animals or kids who might think that this is real whipped cream and try to eat the spackle.
This project is probably one of the easiest and it turns out so cute. You're gonna start with a white pillar candle and then you're also gonna need some red candles. I found these like long tapered candles, I think at the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna open up my candles first and I'm going to light the red one. Be very careful with this. If you are a kid, have a grown up do this for you. This wax can get very hot, obviously lighters, flames, all the dangerous things. Once I light the candle, I'm gonna give it a few seconds for the wax to melt, and then I'm gonna take the wax as it's dripping off, and I'm kind of just going to drip it onto my white candle. I decided to kind of go around the top and do a rim first around the top, and then come back and add drips going down the side. So as you can see, I'm just letting it drip around all over the candle. I felt it worked best if I tilted the candle as I did the drips, because if you'd let it do straight down, it kind of would go all the way down. So as you can see, I just kind of went around slowly, very carefully. Don't burn yourselves, be very careful. Wax is hot. I don't mind any extra drips that fall randomly onto the candle because again, it's supposed to kind of look like a blood drip, a blood splatter. It can be a little bit messy, but as you can see here, I do like to tilt the candle. As I'm dripping it, it just makes the drips run down really nicely. So I just went around the whole candle until I felt like it had enough drips. And that's essentially this entire craft. Isn't that cute? You could set these out on your mantle, set them out on a table. It's just, I love these so much. It turns out so cute. So now we're gonna make some book stacks. If you guys have watched my videos in the past, you know I like to make the book stacks. I like to buy the wood um, in whole pieces at Lowe's and then cut them down. It's just more cost effective if you're gonna make a lot of book stacks like I like to do. I cut each one down into three little rectangles that are three and a half inches long each. Once I have all of my little book stacks down to size, I did sand the edges to make them a little smooth. With, and now I'm gonna paint these. I'm gonna do black and orange because again, Halloween, we're trying to be festive. We're trying to stay in the Halloween spirit. I'm gonna cover the top and sides of one of them. And there I dropped it face down, of course I did. Um, I'm going to cover the top and the sides of one of these blocks, but then the other two, I'm not going to waste paint covering the whole things when all you're going to see are the sides. So I'm just going to paint the sides of the other two, just, you know, to save paint. As you guys have seen, we are running low on the black paint, so I'm like trying to stretch it as far as I can. So here I am just painting the sides with the black and the orange. I decided to do two black blocks, one orange block for this specific stack, but you can make these whatever color you want. You could do lime green, purple, black, white, orange, just do whatever your heart desires. That's the beauty of crafting your own things. You can make them whatever color scheme you want. Now that these are completely dry, I have some words that I cut out on the Cricut to put on them. As you can see, I like to leave the insides of the B's and the A's on there until after I get them onto the blocks and then I weed them out after. It's just easier for me that way. Do whatever works for you. This font, I believe, is called Cookies and Milk. And I just really thought it was cute. It kind of gives a little bit of a Ray Dunnish vibe, but not exactly. So it's one of my favorite fonts to use. So I use this, it's a free font on the font. I think it is free for personal use, but these are just for me anyways to put in my office. So um, again, I'm just gonna add all the words and I am kind of lining them all up to be on the right side of the block because I'm gonna tie some string and add a little extra decorative piece to the left side. So that's why I always kind of line my words up on the right side. So I have room to add a little extra decoration on the left. Once I have these all done, I'm going to start gluing them together. I'm just using hot glue. It doesn't have to be perfect. These are just gonna sit on a disc. So they don't have to be like super sturdy or anything. You can use wood glue if you prefer, but hot glue works just fine, especially because I'm also going to be tying string around it as well. I'm just gonna glue all these together and try my best to line them up straight. However, my cuts aren't perfect. So I'm gonna use this string. This actually came out of like the gift wrap stuff last Christmas. I've used this so much. If you've watched my videos, you've seen me use this kind of string on so many different things. The string has lasted me so long and I still have so much of it left. I kind of love it. 
I thought the black and white one kind of went with the Halloween vibe. So I'm just going to wrap it around and glue it onto the bottom of this book stack. I have these bones, the same bones I used for the mug topper, the little foam bones. And again, I just wanted some kind of like 3D element, something to stick up, stick out, and just, you know, be a little extra. So I'm just going to hot glue these right on top. And there you go. You have a cute, beautiful book stack. These are super stinking cute. Finally, I'm going to make this terrarium. I really like these little terrarium hanging pods. I don't know what these are called. I'm going to call it a terrarium. Um, I really like these. I got this at the Dollar Tree, and I also got some floral moss from the Dollar Tree. And I don't know if this is real moss, but it definitely smells like dirt. Um, I got some little pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, and I also got this cool little skeleton army from the Dollar General for a dollar. I got lights. Those are optional, but I did not end up using them. I thought it would make it too playful. So I'm just going to take the moss and I'm just going to kind of put it in the bottom of my terrarium and spread it around, kind of break it up because it was kind of clumped up. And as you can see, it's going to be like the grass. Take these pumpkins and I'm going to just pull the little wire out of the bottom of them. That one did rip the whole bottom of the pumpkin off, but it's okay because you're not going to see the bottom of the pumpkin anyways. Using some hot glue, I'm kind of going to start placing pumpkins and skeletons inside of my terrarium just to kind of make like a little display. I, I kind of was going for like a creepy graveyard vibe. I was going to put some tombstones, but I didn't have enough room and I thought this worked good enough. So, so as you can see, we got our little skeletons, their garden, their little pumpkin patch. How cute is that? You can hang it up, you can put lights in it, or you can just leave it as it is. I thought it would just be cute like that sitting on my mantle and that's what I'm going to do with it. I have some more Halloween projects coming up next week, so tune in so you can see those. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see every time I post a new video and I will see you guys next time. Bye!